Hey, did you know you can go to ColinMullen.com in order to get art and art prints like the ones you're seeing on screen and also the one you're about to see? It's pretty neat. You can get art. You can give it to people. It's a cool gift with money. Yay. ColinMullen.com. Hey, everybody. So with that great intro out of the way, let's, let's talk about this piece real quick, and then I'll tell you about the subject matter of this video. Um, so I consider this piece as, it's okay. I don't know if it's as successful as I'd like it to be. I consider it in the same sort of series as you look like someone who knows how to enjoy life or, um, uh, I am not good with words, but I love you and all of those other mannequin like ones. Um, you know, why be happy today when there's always tomorrow. I consider this part of that series. Um, a lot of those are very close and intimate. Um, like very close to the uh, the subject. And I wanted to try and um, A, limit my palette more and B, uh, push it a little bit farther away from the viewer and see how that turned out. And it's okay. I feel like I'm gonna probably go at this uh, sort of thing again, but I I'm more or less happy with how this turned out uh, despite the uh, limitations that I set for myself. But anyway, um, let's, let's talk about today's thing because that's why you're here. So. Let me start by saying a couple of things. First off, it's April 2019. The minimum wage in the United States is $7.25. The living wage uh, for a single working adult in Austin, Texas, where I live, is $11.55. The price of an apartment in Austin, Texas is $800 to $1,000. Um, I'm giving you these numbers so you have an idea of what the world is like to give this video a bit of longevity. Uh, also, if you live somewhere else in the world, you may have no idea what these numbers mean, but hopefully that gives you some reference point that you can kind of figure things out. Let's, let's start with the most baseline thing. I'm going to be talking about, uh, how much to charge for prints, how much to charge for, um, you know, physical original works, and also how much to charge for commissions. And I'm going to be giving general guidelines and my reasoning for those guidelines. This. Uh, hopefully will help you inform your numbers on what you should pay or charge, I should say, and go from there. So at a base level, and all these equations will be on screen, but you will need algebra in order to uh, do this. Uh, at a base level, you should be charging S plus L times 1.2 equals P. Uh, solving for P, S being the supplies cost, the paint, the canvas, the tools that you need to use uh, that you will expend in order to make the piece. Uh, L being the labor cost that we'll talk about in a minute. And then the 1.2 being, you know, you just charging an extra 20% because basically at the end of the day, you're going to have to put aside some money for taxes, uh, and you will need to charge tax on top of this, but you're gonna, you're gonna lose some money, uh, because you're not having money taken out of your you know, budget like you would if you worked in a normal day job. You're not working a day job anymore. You're working for yourself, which means that the IRS is going to be interested in you. And being careful about this kind of thing is super important. So having like an extra 20% in savings for when you get hit with that bill at the end of the year for like $600, $800 just arbitrarily because you do art uh, is something you should be aware of that happens. And by having this 20% that you're putting aside, you won't be blindsided by it. I see a lot of people who start on Twitch thinking that they're just making all the money in the world. Nope. You're actually not having to pay that tax like you do normally. That's taken out of your you know, wages when you work in a normal job. Uh, and you need to do that for yourself. Uh, so just kind of keep that in mind. So whatever that number is, whatever P just came out to in your equation, if you need to pause this video at any point, please do so. But whatever P just was, whatever that price is, that is your base price. You should not be charging any less than that for a piece that is uh, a physical original. Um, if it's a commission and it's an original, I like to charge like an extra 20% on top of that, whatever that number is, um, because that way um, it, it means that it's something special. Now, that way we have some sort of number, but this, I don't t entirely care for this pricing method 
because uh, it sort of still has you in the mindset of someone who works a day job. You're going to try and charge your labor price based on the living wage or minimum wage, depending on how much you respect yourself. Um, and that's not particularly good because, you know, when I first started doing art, it would take me 12 plus hours to finish a piece. And nowadays, you know, a piece like the one you're looking at right now, uh, or, you know, the majority of the other ones that I do on this channel could take me, you know, two to three hours to do. Uh, so as time goes on, I get better at art, which means that I take less time, which means that I'm going to be charging less. You see how that works? If you're charging per hour, that's not good. So an alternative method that seems to make more sense to me is charging uh, with this equation. Uh, y times X, parentheses, uh, times 1.2 uh, equals, again, price. Uh, where X is the size of the painting in square inches and Y is your base price per square inch. Uh, so for example, uh, a 11 by 14 canvas is 154 inches wide or 154 inches in square inches. Um, and so if you were to charge 50 cents, for example, which is about as low as I'd recommend, probably a dollar is a better starting point, but 50 cents is a number, then you'd be charging about $77 for that painting, not counting the extra 1.2 which would bring it closer to like 92.40 so that's a number and you can change that price over time you just change your base price per square inch as you get better and the idea being that the bigger the piece the more expensive it is there's a certain logic there that people who don't do art follow they go oh well it's huge so it must be expensive um the the where this starts to break down is when you have little 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 tiny canvases where the detail is much more difficult that can get you into some weird numbers so everything i'm saying is a suggestion and i hope that this is helpful i would also recommend that on top of that equation you would also will want to charge any service fees that you're having to pay so i sell my art primarily through ebay and I use PayPal to make that transaction. So then my equation looks more like Y times X times 1.2 times 1.03 because PayPal charges 3% plus another 0 0.3 because they charge 30 cents on top of that for some reason times 1.09, which is eBay's cut of about 9%. Um, and that gives you like make sure that after they take their cuts, you still make whatever you were trying to make in the first place. Um, take that into account. Seriously. Uh, I see a lot of people mess that up as well. Uh, so that works for, you know, paintings. I think the square inch thing is probably the best way to do it. Uh, just because it makes the most sense and it's the easiest to scale up as you get better. Uh, but what if you're selling like prints, like, let's say you're going to a convention or you're selling prints online. Generally speaking, I wouldn't recommend going any less than about, you know, $13. And the reason for that is a print is probably going to cost you about $12 to manufacture at some place like Kinko's or through Redbubble or what have you. So you need to be charging a little bit on top of that because you're supposed to make money. Some artists will serialize their prints so they'll have 200 made and that's it. I've tried doing that in the past and philosophically with me, that doesn't work. Um, I, I like the idea of having people be able to consume my art in mass, you know, so that way anyone can enjoy it, but that's just me. Um, do it, you will. You know, this is all under the assumption that capitalism exists and that you're trying to work in that society these numbers may change for you um as far as commissions go uh for physical work like i said i like to add an extra 20 percent on top of that just because uh you know i'm going out of my way to make something for you that's not something that i wanted to make in the first place so it's going to cost you more um and that's a nice even equal uh way for me to figure out how much to charge but if you're doing digital art which is a 
I should say, not my forte. It's not where I've really, you know, had a lot of work or a lot of uh, success. Uh, I would highly recommend that you go with a commission page. You can just Google commission page, then look at the images. Also, if you have a commission page, post it in the, um, the comments down below and let me know what kind of stuff you're doing so that way other people can kind of use you as an example or maybe commission you, hey? Um, I would recommend that you don't go any lower than $5 uh, as your minimum. Uh, and the reason there being that anyone who's trying to buy art from you for less than $5 is going to be a very special, awful kind of customer. They're gonna be the kind of customer that wants um, high quality work for very, very cheap. And you are someone who is a skilled craftsman who has put work and energy into learning how to do a thing. And if they want to have that for free, they could just learn to do it themselves. Any person that is trying to get art from you for less than $5 for a quickie sketch is, is not worth your time. I've turned away plenty of commissions, plenty of sales because they tried to lowball me. And part of doing this as a living is just understanding that people are going to try and lowball you. People are going to disrespect you. And sometimes they don't even realize that they're doing it. And sometimes they don't even mean to do it. But five bucks is your minimum. Generally, I've seen that people who have uh, the maximum somewhere around like 50 to 60 on their most expensive product uh be fairly successful you could go less than that that's totally fine but that range seems about right um and i, I like the pizza topping method where you have you know add-ons you know like uh extra a couple of bucks to have a background or um what have you that can be added on to any of these other things so they can kind of pick out how much they want to spend and they it feels like they have control over it and when they try and you know could you just slip in a background real quick you can be like oh yeah it'd just be like an extra five ten twenty bucks whatever it is and they understand why there's like a rhyme and a reason to the pricing schedule that makes sense to people i would also highly recommend using uh especially if you're online using paypal's invoice system it prompts them to pay it itemizes it and it also gives you a way of um disputing it if they decide they don't want to pay i would also recommend that you if you're doing commissions not start work until you have been paid you will be ripped off you will be ripped off even if you do this you will be ripped off in general but if you have as good of a legal case as you can possibly have if you have it in writing that they're supposed to pay you and they paid you and then you submitted them the work and you sent it to them through the appropriate like the appropriate channels and then they still decide to dispute the claim you can use that evidence in your favor with paypal um that goes with anything a contract is good we can talk about contracts later but legal stuff is not something that i am terribly comfortable in talking about mainly because I can get in a whole lot of trouble if I get it wrong. Um, but have have all of the reservations that you would like to have and speak to a proper lawyer rather than some idiot on the internet for you know proper legal advice. But generally speaking, look out for yourself because there are scumbags. Um, so I hope that this has been a helpful selection of tips as far as how to price. I would also random note, recommend that whatever your increments are that you're charging you charge in like your base prices in increments of like base 10 so no like weird prices like 13 dollars and 42 cents it's like what is that also don't do like something something 99 like not like 20.99 because that makes it seem like milk or like things you buy at the grocery store it's a weird amount and it's it's just round up just seriously round up to the next dollar it's totally fine i like to do an increments of a five just because that makes it nice and even it looks clean people like base 10 it's a good system five to ten dollar you know increment increases across the board on stuff uh you know you won't see a, a canvas for me go on sale for 183 it'd be 185 because that's just a, a number that people like to look at. It's not as awkward and weird as 183 is. I would keep in mind that as you do this, you're gonna get better, you're gonna get more clients, and as such, your prices are gonna increase. 
And when they increase, you're gonna have some people who complain. I would recommend not increasing them too fast. Generally speaking, uh, a bump of 10, 20% every now and then is reasonable. People will understand why you're getting better, you're getting more popular. Um, and in the beginning, your art prices are gonna fluctuate pretty rapidly, uh, but try and have them always going up. Let's start with a low amount, you know? Like if you're not sure how much to charge for a canvas, dollar or 50 cents per square inch right if you're using that method commissions five dollars to twenty dollars is your range of different things that you're going to be you know pricing and see what is too much work for that amount of effort and for that amount of money get a good number and most of all the point here is to be able to do what you enjoy doing if you're doing so many commissions that you're hurting yourself like your arms are hurting your prices aren't high enough you can charge more it's fine um and i've spoken about emergency commissions before and i'll link off to that video in a minute but um let me talk about the the, the patrons who have made this video possible and hopefully you found this video helpful enough that you would want to go to patreon.com slash rev scarecrow in order to be one of those people but anyway let's start with wapfu uh and these are all the people who are at five dollars or more uh thank you wapfu uh, thank you to my beautiful wife, Tilda. Uh, I love you. Uh, thank you, Theodore Corbier. Thank you, Spencer Kane. Thank you, Plex. Thank you, Flanixia Theora. Thank you, Obus Kirby. Thank you, Moodles. Thank you, Micah. Thank you, Maliciousness. Thank you, James at Games. Thank you, Geizuzan. Thank you, Duxu. Thank you, Bubba Fair. Thank you, Andy. Thank you, Amber, and thank you, Adam Kearney. You guys are great. And that's at the $5 tier. It also gets you access to the Discord if you want to, like, just randomly send me messages and I'll, you know, harass you with stupid memes, as I'm supposed to as someone on the internet, I think. Um, you know, and, and if you're interested and you want to get, like, art critiques, there's a $10 or more tier there. Or if you just want to see these videos a little bit early, that's about, like, the dollar tier. But anyway, that's my Patreon. And that's money as it is, pertains to art. Hopefully this video is helpful. Sorry I dragged on a bit. And here's me signing off. I hope you enjoyed this. If you did, throw a sub or a like or throw a comment telling me I'm wrong or whatever you think. Uh, but I will see you guys next time. Thank you so much. Goodbye.